Byron Donalds is back again causing trouble. A lot of you would like this one. Some of you would cringe, but check it out. Chairman, uh, thanks for being here, everybody. Look, a couple things. Uh, first, what we're seeing here, what we're witnessing with uh, the Biden family, frankly, is just a web of concealment, of deception. So a lot of people would say corruption. But let's be very clear. You have this many companies involved with this velocity of transactions, size of transactions. Like my colleagues have said, this is not how normal businesses operate. Um, I had the ability uh, with Chairman Comer and other members of the committee to go over to the Treasury building and review documents. And having read those documents, one thing is became pretty crystal clear that there were many people who had serious questions about the transactions and about the velocity of these transactions and they either get very, very, very deep into concealment, hiding money, shifting money. Um, and for the purpose, we don't know, because one thing everybody in this room and the American people definitely know is that the Biden family doesn't really have a business. There is no business structure around this family except politics. Mm, but then there are transactions. And since Joe Biden has spent decades in the Senate, served eight years as vice president, and is now president of the United States, and the family's getting money from various countries and foreign businesses through various shell companies and this web of LLCs. I mean, guys, you in the press, this is easy pickings. I'm giving you Pulitzer stuff here. Like, all you have to do is literally look at our memo and see the level of detail upon which they have created this. And it's very, it's very, very frustrating. We have now been able to clearly see that the Biden's associates, like Rob Walker, Eric Sherman, as has been discussed, created at least 16 companies while Joe Biden was vice president of the United States. 16 companies created <laughs> while he was vice president. Now the list is 20, and as we continue our investigation, that list is growing. And like I said before, the question is to serve what purpose? And the purpose of all these companies being created is to conceal money that the Biden family has been gain, gain, gaining because Joe Biden has been sitting at the upper echelon of our politics for almost five decades. That is the entire purpose here. Here's an example of what I mean. You have Rosemont Seneca Partners, Rosemont Seneca Advisors, Rosemont Seneca Technology Partners, RSP Holdings, RSTP2 Alpha, RSTP2 Bravo, hmm. Rosemont Seneca Thornton, Rosemont Seneca Bohai. I want to make sure I pronounce it right. Bohai. B-O-H-A-I. And the list goes on and on. Cycling through this many companies serves no legitimate purpose. And as somebody who actually worked in banking, I did that long before I came here. Whenever there was like this many companies just laying all over the place. There's something. And you see wire transfers and cashier checks over here going to random members of the family for no apparent purpose at the size and velocity at which all of this was being conducted, the only logical conclusion of a financial professional is you are concealing money. Let me restate this. You are concealing money from either the IRS or from credit agencies or from other people in general. That's the only reason you set up a structure like this. Some of these companies were connected to Hunter's personal professional company, Oswego, or Skinny Atlas, Scale Atlas, however you want to pronounce it. And the list goes on and on. And Mr. Biggs, he talked about Hudson West 3 and some of those other issues that were going on as well. One thing I want to make sure is that all of this has happened and Joe Biden is aware. Nobody in this room can logically sit here and say that the president of the United States had no idea that these companies were being formed while he was vice president of the United States. And I will add you, he was in probably in better mental shape then than he is today. You know, I'll throw that out there. And so what this committee is going to continue to do is pursue this investigation. We are going to continue to document and we're going to provide that information to all of you in the press. So to help you and frankly, you know, like Congresswoman May said, and probably help the DOJ along with their investigation. One quick note, it's interesting that the Department of Justice has been investigating Hunter Biden for quite some time. Hmm. Wait, is it possible that all these businesses could have been legitimate? Yeah, is it possible that there was like a parent company and multiple group companies just working legitimately? But then we would have known, right? We would have known the president's company or what he used to do before. Because when Donald Trump came into power, even before we knew about the Trump Towers and, you know, the different things Trump was doing. 
have is there anything maybe I'm, I'm not in america so i'm just asking is there like a business associated with like the biden family is there a business like that let's try to justify it and see if it adds up if it doesn't add up then it's something that needs to be looked into because there's a lot of companies 16 with more investigation 20 with more investigation is going up well americans i'll leave it to you and we seem to just never really get anywhere and so I think that's also interesting as well. I wonder what's going on at the Department of Justice. Uh, but that being said, the bottom line is there is no real business here. None. And let me also say this, because I know there are many in this room who wanted to go down all the various um, uh, schemes that our colleagues on the other side of the aisle accused the former president of. Be very clear. The former president actually had a business, a very big business. You could say it was his name, you could say it was his buildings, you could say it was wine, you could say it was branding, you could say it was The Apprentice, but he had a very big and legitimate business, which everybody in this room clearly knows and understands and can point to and say, ah, that's the thing, that thing over there. Joe Biden has no business except his position in politics. And it is the requirement of this committee to investigate that. We're going to continue to do that, and we're going to let the facts speak for themselves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Lastly, we'll have uh, Representative Jordan. Um, suspicious activity reports. The, the key word in that phrase is the word suspicious. There are 170 of those reports, many of them put together by the Treasury Department of our government in the Obama-Biden administration. So 170 of those that the committee has reviewed, thousands of pages of bank records the committee has reviewed, and that has told us that there are now multiple, as Mr. Donald just said, multiple LLCs receiving money from foreign entities and paying that money out to multiple members of the Biden family. And the fundamental question is the one Byron just raised. For what? What did they do? What was the business? What service did they provide? What value did they add? What did they do to warrant receipt of the money? That is the fundamental question, and no one seems to have an answer to that fundamental question. But Mr. Comer, Chairman Comer, and the team, that's what we're looking into trying to get. And I would just say this, too. Why not just come clean? Mm -hmm. Why not just be honest with us? Why not tell us the truth? But I would tell you this. I think it's a pattern with this administration. They haven't been square with us, straight with us, straight with the American people about anything. They, told, they tell us the border is secure. We know it isn't. They tell us our debt ceiling bill is going to hurt veterans. No, it doesn't. <laughs> You see what politicians do? They take one problem and link it to everything. <laughs> Listen to his statements. I just thought I should flag that. Well, they tell us the border is secure. We know it isn't. They tell us our debt ceiling bill is going to hurt veterans. No, it doesn't. Joe Biden said during the campaign that the letter from 51 former intel officials when he used it in the debate, he portrayed it as if it was organic. And we now know through another investigation that we're all working on. That, in fact, it was coordinated. That letter from 51 former intel officials was coordinated with the Biden campaign. So much so, the Biden campaign told Mike Morrell, here's the journalist. We want you to have uh, the story to the letter to first. Why not just be straight with us? Why not come clean? Why not tell us the truth? Tell the American people the truth. They deserve that from their government. Mm -hmm. Again, the fundamental question is, what did they do to warrant the receipt of millions and millions of dollars? Why did, why did Joe Biden's brother... Why did Joe Biden's sister-in-law, why did Joe Biden's son, why did so many family members get the money? What did they do to, re to warrant receipt of that money? That's the fundamental question. Chairman Comer and the team have done great work, and they're determined to get answers to those fundamental questions. Wow. Hey, uh yeah, could they ask, maybe they should ask, like, one of the people from the family, like, the brother or the son, have they asked those questions already? I heard there was a, there's a case in court right now nothing caught but an indictment a gun indictment thing i don't know but can, can they call him for questioning and ask those questions and also how come obama is not in the discussion a lot or he didn't know about this i mean the way i see it though if I, the way i see an office i see i see like if something is going on in your in your space your area of jurisdiction then you should know about it. Now, I'm not saying Obama was involved with this. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying he was the president and this was going on under the vice president. Did he know something about it? Or if he didn't, he should come out and, you know, speak on it and let the investigation go through. It's a very concerning one. Um, 
I don't know. I don't know if this is all factual or just allegations to counter the, the Donald Trump allegations. But you talk to me in the comment section. If people are stealing money and committing crime, there should be consequences and they should be held accountable regardless of who. Donald Trump, Biden, everybody should be held accountable. That's what I'm saying. Anyways, it's the end of this video. Smash the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.